You're about to watch some VR gameplay recorded from a preview window at 30 FPS. Rest assured, the game itself is running butter smooth at 90 FPS at all times. I was browsing Reddit the other day and stumbled onto this really cool alpha release video for Tinker Pilot. I'm a big fan of VR myself, I purchased the Reverb G2 specifically to play with Elite in combination with my two verbal sticks. I've got some videos on those if you're interested. Anyhow, I approached the one-man developer for Tinker Pilot and asked him if I could do a little review video on his project and they said yes. A gentle reminder then that as always I'm doing this because I enjoy promoting cool stuff, whether that's Star Citizen or a one-man project. I'm not being paid for doing this and even run all my videos ad-free on YouTube. Tinker Pilot is a VR space sim simulator that focuses on cockpit customization freedom. Essentially, you can use a basic setup or completely design your cockpit from the ground up. That means placing interactable monitors wherever you like, as well as replicating your real life elements and bringing them directly into the cockpit. If you're using a Quest headset, you can even use hand tracking to operate all the buttons, which is really cool, but for me, using the reverb, I am required to use the controllers. Which is actually a bit of a hassle because I'm constantly switching between operating the buttons with my controller and then laying them down to operate my sticks. But that's more of a limitation of my headset than it is this game of course, and the game is obviously focusing on using your actual hands to operate the, the buttons in the cockpit. So I opted to try out the default cockpit layout. I was mostly curious about how the ship handling felt. It took me a few minutes to get used to how the ship controls worked and assign all the buttons that I need. And of course, I looked to immediately turn off all of the assists and get myself as close as I can to full manual control. It's very interesting how this game will allow you to set parts of the systems on automatic, manual, or somewhere in between. For example, you can limit your maximum thrust output, which I of course disabled immediately. And you can also disable the stabilization systems that stop your ship in place and stop it from rolling. The cool thing here is that you could go for a full Elite Dangerous FA Off approach where you drift forever and your pitch roll and yaw inputs are not stabilized automatically as you continue to spin forever until you make the counter uh, movements required. Or alternatively, you can choose more of the Star Citizen decoupled mode where you still drift forever but the rotationals, pitch yaw and roll, remain stabilized so letting go of the stick will stabilize the ship in that manner. I noticed that the current flight model sees identical maximum thrust outputs in any direction, meaning that your forward acceleration is as strong as your retros, your verticals and your strafing. From a Star Citizen racer's perspective, you can imagine the wish for more thruster power at all times and so I expected to really like this very strong identical thrust power in each direction, but in reality it actually feels quite strange. It's a challenge to avoid overcompensating your lats and verts, and you often find it unnecessary to roll or yaw to try and point your strongest thrusters into the opposite direction of travel to tighten a turn or stop. Instead, you can use any thruster with the same amount of strength, which makes it a little less interesting to fly. That isn't to say though that the overall flight model isn't really good, especially in VR the controls feel really nice. The ship drifts as you expect, turns as you expect, and feels incredibly fun to fly overall. I understand that there are already some elements of gameplay, but I personally haven't really dabbled with it a lot myself beyond the roaming around the different areas and flying through the racing gates. I understand that there is some drone combat, a third person camera, which is a drone that chases you, and a really cool way to transition between areas. I asked the developer about the current state of the game, which is being developed in Unity. They mentioned that most experimental features of the game are done, and now most of the remaining work consists in polishing the experience and adding more content to it with the help of testers and early feedback. The focus for the game moving forward lies on the idea that players who like to tinker with their ship can fully customize the way they interact with it according to their preference and flying style. The way you distribute the panels, the holographic or physical controls, and all of the custom behaviors that follow along with that. Of course, achieving that one-to-one -one immersion by matching their real devices into their virtual cockpits. The final plan would be to support as many devices as possible out of the box and make it easier for the players to share their creations with the rest of the community. 
The plan is to release Tinker Pilot on Steam Early Access sometime this year. The first release will be single player with one ship and some missions to complete. Personally though, I would really be looking forward to some kind of racing over the multiplayer. The latest build is immediately accessible by project supporters at Patreon. You can choose between a single payment option that will grant you a Steam key on release as well, or you can pay monthly and get some extra stuff as I understand it. So, if you're looking for a fun new VR space sim experience where you can build and interact with your very own cockpit, I'd recommend you check out Tinkerpilot. Pilot. 